This is the story of Superstar. He's a massive 22.200 plus inch Iowa giant. And to really appreciate this buck, we need to go back to last summer. When we got this beast on camera back in the summer of 2020, I knew he was going to be an up and coming superstar if he made it, which is where he obviously got his name. This young deer already had so much going on. He had points going everywhere. He even had a drop time coming off of his base. This buck had unbelievable potential. And honestly, he was a trophy in a lot of people's books, including mine. But knowing that he was only four years old, this deer had unbelievable 200 inch potential. If we just had to get him through one more year. And a lot of people don't realize this, but most 200 inch deer look like this or versions of this in their younger self. And a lot of them unfortunately get killed before they reach their full potential. Now all we could do is hope that this was gonna be Superstar story. As the 2020 season progressed, I was getting consistent photos of Superstar. The problem was he was all over the place. He was on the neighbors, he was on me, he was everywhere, which means he was a roamer, which is the worst kind of deer to have if you're trying to get him through the season. So this obviously stressed me out, but my hopes were still high that he would survive. So it'd be pretty easy for me in this situation just to be like, you know what, he's running all over the place, going on to the neighbors constantly, I better shoot him or the neighbor will. And you know, there's a principle that I've learned over the years of chasing giant whitetails like this guy or, or like this guy that you have to do this one thing and that's always bet on the deer you know it's a gamble when you're hunting free-ranging whitetails that you just never know if the neighbor's gonna get him or not or EHD is gonna kill him you can't control that and so one thing that you can control is you not being the neighbor that actually shoots him and so really you just got to have that principle ingrained into you if you want to hunt giant whitetails because you can't kill a 200 if you kill him when he's 170 as a four-year-old. And again, that may come across to maybe polarizing to some of you guys, but again, that is the reality when it comes to chasing big giants, is you can't shoot them before they get to their prime. And that is why we passed Superstar. Even though he was super cool, had a drop time, tons of point, was a really respectable big deer, but I wanted to see if we can just get him through the next season. You know, as the 2020 season progressed, you were getting later and later in the season, I was getting less and less pictures of Superstar, which made me nervous, making me think he had moved off onto the neighbors and wasn't really living on me. But late November, I actually got a chance to see him on the hoof. Let's dive into that hunt real quick. Yeah, well guys, we uh, ran out of light. We saw Superstar. Now this buck isn't much right now, but he will be a future 200 if he survives. He is a monster, monster young buck. He's got a club that comes off his base. Um, I'm excited to see what he turns out. He could be our 2021 buck or maybe 2022. That was such a relief for me, knowing he'd made it all the way into late November without being killed by the neighbor. But we still had gun season ahead of us and I was nervous. So the 2020 deer season came to a close and I haven't had a single picture of Superstar since December 15th. So I'm obviously stressed out and I'm convinced that he got shot during gun season. But we were shed hunting on the farm in February and as luck and fate would have it, we found one of Superstar's sides. Knowing that Superstar made it through the season and was still alive was such a huge relief for me. This gave me so much hope moving forward into the 2021 deer season. Well, it's now March, and if you guys follow us on any of our social media platforms or watch any of our videos, you know just how hard we work on our farms. It's borderline crazy how much work I do on our farms to optimize the whitetail habitat. My goal with every single one of my farms is to make it the best absolute best whitetail property possible. So first up on the list of things to do on this farm was doing some TSI work. I wanted to increase some bedding area, some natural browse, and just some overall cover for the deer. So let's dive in to some of that TSI work.
So after all the TSI work, I wanted to burn off all the CRP and then replant it with warm season grasses. Better grasses for whitetails, taller grasses, just overall better habitat for the bucks and just increase that thermal cover. So after we did all the TSI work, burned off all the CRP and planted summer grasses, I wanted to do more. I wanted to plant apple trees. And I'm not talking just one or two. I'm talking entire orchards all over our farm. We ended up planting over 300 apple trees just on this one farm and over 620 across all of our farms. I know that sounds crazy. It even sounds crazy to me, but check it out. So we've done the TSI work, we did the CRP and summer grass work, we've planted the apple orchards, and now it's time to start food plots. Well, not yet, because there's one more thing I wanted to do before we got into food plots, and that was rent a backhoe and put in some watering holes. I know this sounds like a reality TV show at this point, but it's true. This is what I did to my farm to get it set up for the 2021 season. So we rented the backhoe and I was part starting to put in the watering holes. But that decision came with some pretty serious consequences. Let's see what happened. Man, what a crazy day. I mean, I have screwed up a lot, don't get me wrong. <laughs> this much in one day is insane. So here's where it all started. Well, this isn't how you hope to start the day. It's a little slick and slid right off the edge. But we're gonna get her out. Well, it slid right off and I'm pinned up against this tree. And our track, our little mini excavator, doesn't have enough juice to pull me out. We tried. It literally is just because of the morning dew. I was driving right here and it just goes whoop and slides right into the tree. I, I, it's crazy. That truck may never be the same. She's free! 
Oh boy. Again, five inches of rain this weekend. I just made everything impossible. Boy, it's good to have friends. I was mowing through the cedars over there and popped one of the tracks off. These guys are here to help out. Cause I sure the heck have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so that basically slipped off. We need to get that back into there. Problem 55 for the day. We got the skid loader really stuck spent two hours working on that sucker to getting that stuck so i'm really proud of this one and uh yeah but that is what great neighbors are for david brothers come to the rescue all right so hopefully we'll get this guy out all right please work that's not twenty thousand dollars of damage coming out of there but we got it free oh boy 38 hours and two days and all we want to do is get home and now we're stranded on the side of the highway that is not good oh boy Ugh. we just lifted it up and it literally just fell off this is a new trailer. It's not even a year old. That is bad. It was literally on fire driving down the freeway. We looked back and there were flames shooting out of this thing. This is crazy. Ugh. I think she'll still ride. <laughs> no big deal. Doing what we gotta do. Yeah, so that turned out to be a disaster, but let's hope those watering holes pay off because it cost me my nice truck. <laughs> So when it comes to food plots, with what I plant and where I plant it, it all comes down to the previous year's history. What I mean by that, if I'm hunting a target buck, for example, like Superstar, if he's on my farm really early, I want to plant food plots that are more advantageous for whitetails in the early season. For example, a lot of tonnage, real green leafy stuff like turnips or radishes are really, really good early season. So I knew if I was going to be successful in hunting Superstar, I was going to have to do it in the early season. So I wanted to plant my food plots accordingly. So the first thing I do is look back at the history of the trail camera pictures I did get of him in 2020. And based on that information is based on where I put the food plots and where it's easiestly accessible for me to get in, get out without disturbing the deer. And so I had a perfect place in mind where I was going to put a new food plot that I thought I just might get a shot at him in. So we've done a ton of work to transform our farm into the most optimum habitat for whitetails. So all that is left is now food plots. Let's dive in.
So we worked all of our food plots. You know, we mowed them, sprayed them, mowed them again, tilled the dirt, worked our seed into the ground, all before we got a single picture of Superstar in 2021. For all I know, he could be laying dead in a ditch. Maybe he didn't survive the winter. Maybe he got eaten by a coyote. But we did all the work anyways. So needless to say, I can't wait to get cameras out and see if Superstar made it and just see what he blew into for the 2021 season. So I got the cameras out and I could not wait to do that first card pull. And when I did, I could not believe what was on my camera. Superstar not only made it, he turned into a mega 22, 200 plus inch Iowa freak. And I couldn't believe what I was looking at. This was crazy. This deer had the most points of any whitetail I've ever had a picture of. I knew from the very first trail camera picture, he was gonna be a 200 inch deer. And sure enough, in 2021, that's exactly what he was. The best part is I got him on camera in the very food plot that I put in and designed just for him. I had a sense of pride that all that work that we put in up to this point could pay off if I got an opportunity. So I was getting pictures of Superstar all summer and he was getting bigger and bigger. His stickers had stickers. I mean, his points had points. I mean, we're talking an absolute freak of a deer and I was so pumped until we didn't get enough rain. Unfortunately, we just didn't get enough rain for the plants to mature and the deer browsed everything down to little nubs. So I was super stressed out about going into the fall, but we had just enough time to reseed everything if we got a big rain. And as luck and fate would have it, we had a huge rainstorm coming. I just had to replant all of our farms before that big rain. So time wasn't on my side, but I was willing to put in the work and try. Oh gosh, I beat the rain. Well, kind of, I just finished up the last plot and uh, we haven't gotten any rain. You can see my food plot didn't come up. I had a lot of food plots do this this year and I got them all reseeded. I'm just finishing up the last one before the big rain. And you can see the food plot is completely saturated. It's only been raining for literally less than 60 seconds. So heading back to the truck, gonna head home and uh so excited for this food pot to come up finally got some rain Man, we got some big deer to chase this year excited to bring you guys along So this time around, we got a ton of rain, as you guys can see, and we kept getting consistent rains, and the food plots all came up. So I was super grateful for that, and it re-energized my hope that I was gonna get Superstar. But we weren't out of the woods yet, because as soon as Superstar shed his velvet, he changed to a totally different deer. He started doing what he did last year and started roaming. I was getting pictures of him clear on the other end of the farm, just going all over the place. And he started getting less and less consistent. And my fears of not being able to get my chance at Superstar started setting in. So as summer ended and fall kind of started coming and season was just around the corner, he started getting more consistent in one particular spot. You know, he wasn't there every day or even every week, but I would get pictures of him randomly in this one food plot and it would be in daylight. So I want to take a quick second and break down this food plot for you guys so you can kind of see how we laid this out, every aspect of this, that what went into this food plot and maybe why Superstar is showing up here. Let's dive in. So this food plot we put on top of a hill with all the rolling sides being in that tall summer grass that we planted and of course cedars, as you guys can see. On the complete north end of the plot, we have our crop field. Now the farmers planted this, they did get it in pretty late, so we thought that the beans would still be green come October 1st. Just south of the standing grain is where we have our apple orchard planted. Now we planted these in a way to where we can still plant food plots amongst the apple orchard. So you can see all the rows are all perfectly um, distance in a way so we can still plant it in multiple directions. And just south of the apple orchard is our main food plot. Again, this year we went with the turnips and the radishes and the brassica mix, along with some leafy lettuce some, for some extra tonnage, but a real green plot. You guys can see that came up real, real nice. And then on the complete east side of the plot is where we put our blind. 
and that we put it over there so we could hunt it with really any wind that had any west in it. Northwest, southwest, which most winds in Iowa do, do have some west in it. So that's why we placed the blind there. And then 15 yards away from the blind is where we put that watering hole. You guys can see that there. And then obviously we left that one big oak tree right in the middle, which is like the perfect scrape limb. Every year that thing is completely covered in scrapes. There's like six scrapes all around it. It is awesome. So this plot literally has everything. It's got cover that comes right up to the edge of it. It's got all the cedars, summer grasses, everything close. Then you got a big, beautiful hilltop, which has consistent winds. And of course, apple orchard, standing grain, water, you name it, this plot has it. It is the plot of all plots, which is exactly why we're gonna be hunting here. So about a week and a half from the season opener, I'm checking the weather. I'm so excited because I see a huge cold front coming. I'm like, oh my gosh, opening day, cold front, nothing could be better except for the wind direction. It was coming out of the southeast. And as you guys can see from the plot architecture, how I set it up, I can't hunt this plot out of that blind that I have put in there with any east wind. So I have myself a pretty serious dilemma. Obviously I could just wait till the right wind. Unfortunately, the weather is calling for an east wind for the first week of season. And so we have a huge cold front coming in. I'm gonna miss out on that cold front or take the risk of blowing him out of the plot forever. And that's not an option. So I made a bold decision. I decided to bring in a new blind, put it on the complete west side of the plot so I can hunt with any east wind, even north and south, I'm good. But the problem is I'm really far from the scrape tree, I'm really far from the water, and I would have to get pretty lucky for him to be able to come into bow range. But I'd rather hunt there than not at all. So that's exactly where I was gonna be opening day. I 
call this plot the Lonely Oak Tree, or the Lonely Oak Plot, and that's because this plot has one lonely oak tree in it, and there's scrapes all around it. And the reason I bring that up is with the rain, all the scrapes are all wiped out after a big rain like that. So what a lot of bucks do this time of year, you know, October 1st, all the way till the end, after a big rain, they'll come and work all their scrapes. So, I just hope that if he's up on his feet, he comes over here and works these scrapes in the daylight. So that's all we can really hope for. So, we're hunting over green, not grain. And the food plots, you guys can see, really struggled this year. I'm sure a lot of you guys that plant food plots had the same problem. We had a lot of rain early, and then it got 90, 100 degree days, and it just burned it up. Now, I reseeded this food plot. Um... And I, re I redid it, but I did it over there where that other blind is, which you can see over there. It's a lot more green than where we are, but we have a southeast wind today, which is a very weird wind. So I could not hunt the, plot, the spot I wanted to, which is over there, because we've been getting pictures of Superstar coming along the fence row, which means he would have been straight downwind. And I'm just not willing to take that risk, you know, if there's a tiny little crack, he catches our wind, we're gonna get one shot at this big one. So tonight, we're just hoping he gets within bow range. If not, maybe we'll get some amazing footage of him. But one thing is for sure, with Superstar, is we're gonna have to kill him early, because a deer this big, obviously, he's been running on the neighbors on us. A deer like this doesn't make it very long, just being hunted, but then, on top of that, he is a scrappy son of a gun. He broke off every time he had except for one. He even broke off his main beam last year. So I'm hoping to get him killed before he starts snapping tines off. He's a beautiful deer. and Yeah, he's still a trophy with a busted up rack, but it just doesn't do him as much justice as a nice, clean, no-break type of deer. So hopefully we'll get him on the ground. You never know. We might do it day one. That would be pretty amazing. Lord knows I put in the work. You guys have seen it on social, how much work we've put into all of our farms this year. And uh, I'm normally a last day guy, but man, I will take it all day long on the first day. It's 5.40 and I see a big deer just stepped out. Oh my God, dude. It's, it's super storm. It's, it's so early. Get him. This is insane. Oh, he's just, he's far off. We just gotta get him to come in. Come on, big boy. Watching. 
in the water. I put that watering hole in there. As you guys saw how the wind was blowing the past two days. He's been coming from this way. So that's why we didn't sit over there. Um, he just went to the water and we got does feeding up here to our left in the apple trees we planted this spring. There's no apples except for the one that's kind of in front of us. It's got a few stragglers. But they're kind of feeding on this hilltop and there's this little patch of beans behind us that are still green that I noticed on the way in and they're kind of working their way in. So when he gets done with the water, he may work his way across the top here, which will put him inside 60 yards, which I feel really good about. So that's kind of what our plan is right now. We're going to pray to God he comes on top of this hill and doesn't skirt around it. So pray for me, boys. <laughs> we need all the luck we can get right here. I just heart punched him. I just heart punched a 200 inch dick pig. We just got Superstar. I got him. I know I got him. I freaking did it. I got so nervous I thought he was going to take off. But we just got Superstar on the first sit in Iowa. October 1st, baby. Oh my God. Look at the time. 6.05. Smoked him. That's a two and a half inch cutting. I can't believe that guys two first sits in a row it just goes to show you how much all this hard work has paid off for us I'm speechless you guys see the apple trees we've planted you see the food plots I see the work you've seen it and we just got it I feel really really good about it I can't believe this that's our number one buck in Iowa day one freaking smoked him that should have went right through his heart. It should have. We got lots of penetration. And I again, I aim in the middle of the lower third. I'm speechless, guys. You, know, I, you guys can't even believe this. Two first sits. Opening day, Superstar just hit the ground. He's a giant. I mean, just a giant. I can't believe that, guys. I'm, Completely speechless. We're gonna rewatch the footage and make sure, but at, he started wheelbarrowing. I'm pretty sure I shot him in the heart. I'm pretty sure. God, guys, we did it, buddy. We did it. Yes. I love bringing you along. That could be my third 200 inch deer on my own farm. Put in the food plots, built and structured this whole farm just for deer. You're looking at. A young country boy's dream coming true right here. Growing up on a dirt road, chasing whitetails my whole life. And never in a million years would I have thought that I could have pulled that off like that. And we got him. This deer is a giant. It could be my biggest ever, I don't know. You know, deer that, that get this big, you just can't really guess. But we're gonna get down. I mean, I either heart punched him or nothing, but I'm pretty sure. Let's go. Oh, God. Oh, God, I'm in the heart. 
It is soaked. I got him in the heart. <laughs> oh, that. I'm, I'm speechless, guys. Oh my God. That's hard blood. Oh my god, we did it! We got Superstar! Oh my god! Holy smokes! What a giant deer! <laughs> Can you believe this? We got him! What a freaking monster! Holy cow, look at this webbing! That is insane! <laughs> Holy cow, guys. I am just absolutely speechless right now. Our number one buck, day one. Let's count how many points. <sighs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's definitely an inch. 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. <laughs> He's got 21 points. Good. No, 22. I missed one. 22 points. Holy cow. Wow. Wow. You know, the jump he made from one year to the next is just a testament to what good nutrition can do you know, and keeping the deer healthy. You know, in the off season, we make sure there's always food on the farm. We left 17 acres of crops on this farm, which he was obviously enjoying. And, you know, as soon as season's over, a lot of guys, you know, call it quits and just can't wait till next. That's when the work starts for us. You know, we're constantly adjusting and changing the farm, making it more susceptible for big giants like this to live. And my God, did it work? I mean, this deer is just unbelievable. <laughs> what a monster. Day one, opening day, Magnum. I'm speechless, guys. You, know, I, you guys can't even believe this. Two for six, opening day, superstar just hit the ground. He's a giant. Just a giant.
this is not even gonna pay off. But we just got super stars. First seat in Iowa. October 1st, baby. Oh my god, look at the time. 6.05. Smoking. What a monster. Day one, opening day, Magnum.